Welcome back to the second half of the Future Show. Ladies and gentlemen, we're less than six minutes away from the cash open for stocks on Wall Street. Joining us here this morning, we have Alan Nuckman, the chief market strategist at Agora Financial. He's here to help us take a look at some of the economic data and commodity markets. Crude oil, we're going to get into it. Uh, good morning, Alan. Thanks for joining us here. Uh, I do want to talk about some of the price decay we're seeing in commodities, even gold selling off, interestingly enough, with the energies markets coming off and the indices coming off. But I do want to first dive into some of the numbers that we saw at the bottom of the hour. It looks like uh, the international goods trade balance came in at uh, minus uh, 70, is it 9.37 billion? They were prior down 83.11 billion. I noticed here we also have some inventories numbers coming out. Retail inventories, X autos coming in at 0.9%. Wholesale inventories uh, it down 0.1%. And uh, interestingly enough here, I'd imagine these are not the most closely watched numbers here amidst some of the other concerns that we're dealing with this morning. Alan, what's on your radar? Overshadowed by the COVID concerns, obviously. Now, the market's down a little bit less than 2%. We're only about, we were only 5% off the top in the S&P. If you look at the macro market coming into today, uh, yesterday's numbers were really strong. You know, the durable goods, and I think what was the Richmond uh, manufacturing. So we, we continue to get strong numbers, but the COVID concerns, you know, another wave, uh, that's what's giving the market a little bit of pressure. So what we need to see is how the market reacts uh, here in the next couple of sessions uh, after this little bit of pressure to the downside that we've seen. But I think a lot of this and, you know, we're going to get into the very simple relationship again. Dollar bounced back above and that's not every commodity down that simple so far today yeah we've got the dollar which is just inching higher slightly before we get into again the commodities i do want to get your thoughts on them let's talk a little bit about tech you were just mentioning the market and some of the broader market sell-off that we're seeing not as much so in the nasdaq as the s p's down the russell is this considered to be a safe haven nowadays have been uh, kind of feeling like it fares a little bit better than the others amidst the pandemic trade and well, with some of these big tech names and how they've been doing for the most part. I mean, when you look at companies like Amazon, Netflix, and uh, some of the other big names, and we've got earnings headed our way this well as well. A lot of optimism uh, amidst the broader market selling off relative to tech, it seems like. Huge week for earnings. Um, and, and the tech sector has been obviously so strong. Everything is technology. There's a technical component, technology component to every company now. And if there's not, they've been left behind. So. From a, from a technical standpoint in tech, been very strong. We're at a 50-day uh, moving average level for the QQQs. Let's see what happens here in the next few few sessions. But uh, everybody that, that's doubted uh, this, this tech takeoff has uh, learned a, a hard lesson. So, uh, again, it's about risk-to-reward. You want to be buying the dips, selling the rips. It's that simple in this bull trend until proven otherwise. And I don't believe things have changed. Uh, and again, I think the earnings are going to remind us of the fundamental facts of how well those companies are doing and how much money they make. All right, let's shift the attention, the discussion on over to what commodities are telling us. I want to begin with, begin with crude oil. I noticed earlier in the week down below 39, we're seeing continued weakness right now. Stephanie and I were just talking about how that weighs on uh, the Canadian dollar as well, but it weighs on sentiment. One could argue that we've got hurricane demand destruction, but I'd imagine a lot of the weakness we're seeing recently, not only tied to the dollar inching higher, as you mentioned at the beginning of this discussion, but also uh, some of the concerns related to coronavirus numbers sp spiking here in the U.S. and globally. A huge disappointment, not just recently, but we're talking about the last six months. As a trader, that's taken one market away from me that used to have a lot of volatility. Hmm. Volatility is opportunity. Yeah. It used to be a great trading market. Now it's just in a, you know stuck sideways, uh, and we're within a, within a range. You know, we're what are we in, we're between thirty five and forty five. Yeah. Um, let's see where the next leg is. Again, it's so dependent on the dollar, but it, it's been such a disappointment that we've had this coiling. Um, and it doesn't give us the daily ranges and that opportunity to, to uh, take advantage of the market moves the way it used to. Now, it's down, what would you say, 5%. So it's really getting hit hard t again today. Uh, what you want to see is if it snaps back to the 40 level, whatever, it seems to gravitate to this 40, and we've just been stuck there. You know, the good news in, our, in my personal life is that you know, uh, I drive a lot. Uh, I have a house in Michigan that uh, that gas prices have been absolutely stable. I don't think they changed the price on my gas station in Michigan all summer long. They just left it there. So, you know, there's one 
there's one uh, pressure point uh, that 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 hurts a lot of people psychologically is seeing the price of gas move up. Hasn't happened in the longest, longest, longest time. Alan, let's talk uh, a little bit about, um, well, ultimately the dollar, the impact that that has on, um, well, crude oil prices, lawmakers dragging their heels a little bit, not providing that stimulus measure. You can understand why it's coming off a little bit. Uh, I guess uh, potentially even today, inventories could be kind of taking a little bit of a backseat role amidst some of the other concerns. But, you know, even amidst these concerns, I was watching copper. It's come off the last couple of days, but still faring pretty well considering, um, I guess, when you see crude, when you see copper, you just mentioned crude. It has been holding up above some key support around 35. It hasn't been really volatile. Copper, uh, I guess none of these products are really screaming concern, uncertainty, and fear at this point. I mean, you would think crude would have rolled over. You'd think copper would have rolled over. I mean, uh, even the rates right now, Treasury is kind of somewhat stable. Talk to me about uh, is anything at this point really, uh, you know, screaming concern or just sort of, hey, this could be a bit of a pullback and we need to kind of watch some dust settle here before we put that chicken little costume on, as I like to stay and start, say and start running around the cul-de-sac and screaming and yelling about how the sky is falling. Exactly. This is a perfect example of what's not happening. What is happening is one thing, but what's not happening is more important at this particular time. Uh, I'll, get to, I'll get to copper in a second because that's the topic for the day. But to look at treasuries, treasuries had had uh, a run-up, and I, I, we talked last week about how I wasn't very confident in that run-up was going to be sustainable. Uh, the path of least resistance is, is, as far as treasuries go is yield. I mean, it is yield down. Uh, so we've seen the TLT firm up. We've seen uh, the, the bonds firm up. You've seen somewhat of a flight to quality, but I would just say it's more of a flight to reality. I think the yeah. short-term rate's getting up to 0.8%. I think that was a little bit too aggressive, and we dropped uh, a tenth of a percent in just since last Friday. Friday was, the I think, the six-month high uh, in the 10-year uh, in in yield. Um, so that's important to pay attention to. You know, the bonds had rallied from, you know, had dropped from 182 down to 172. Now they're, they're firming up a little bit if you look at the 30 years. So... It's not a big deal if you look at those markets. And, and, and that's how you have to look at things a lot of times is what sort of, not, it's the, not the market action, but it's the other market's reaction. And right now, it seems somewhat muted. We have to look at this as another profit-taking pullback in the, uh, in the stock market. And a little disappointment that we got this close to all-time highs in the S&P and, uh, and in the tech market and the NASDAQ and, and couldn't punch through there. So maybe that's what we're looking at. All right, let's get to copper. Copper, you know, some for some people, it's a barometer, Dr. Copper. Um, I'm not that much of a believer in it. You know, the, the theory behind that was that was way back in the day when people used a lot of copper in their houses. Um, and so the more houses that were being built, the more copper demand was. And that's where that was kind of a barometer of, of uh, you know, economic growth. Okay, that, I think the world's kind of changed, changed gears on that. But for whatever reason... Copper's been holding above the $3 level. It had that one, one sell-off, and then it bounced back above $3. If you look big picture, copper in 2011 was at $4.50, and it went all the way down to $2 in 2016, and in 2020, so we got a double bottom there. We bounced off that. $3.25 is the halfway mark in that larger overall move, and guess what? We got right up to $3.25. So let's see if it can push above that $3.25 level. It pushes above that halfway level, then we've got a lot more upside in that copper market, but that's a very, very strong trend. I've been using FCX, Freeport MacMoran is as my proxy for copper as well, and I'm an options trader, so um, you know we've been been uh, doing well with the pullback on FCX and had a big bounce. Let's see if we can get some follow through there. But I think it's interesting that copper's down one percent, whereas you compare it to gold and some of these other metal markets that are getting hit a little bit harder on this dollar firmness. Yeah, it has been interesting. I'm surprised gold hasn't firmed up, even with the dollar inching higher. It hasn't really, really been a significant move in the dollar, one could argue. And considering the move we've seen in the indices, I would think gold will be holding above 1900 at least. Gives us something to watch. Alan, really appreciate you joining us here. That was a great, a thorough breakdown in terms of what's playing out here. Look at numbers and uh, markets and uh, across the board. Alan, appreciate you joining us here. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Nuckman, the Chief Market Strategist at Agora Financial. We've been talking fundamentals. And while skimming over the charts, I'm going to dive deep into a couple. Let's talk technicals here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's begin.